Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, we have the Bose SoundTouch 20. This is a system I've taken a look at. Someone had previously worked on it. I couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. Uh, the power seemed to work. There were many pieces, lots of ribbon cables uh, that went with this. Uh, some of them were already damaged and it was gonna be costly to try to replace these. It was just very difficult without a working system. Uh, to compare things to, it was going to be really difficult. I do think the problem is probably here in this like logic board, but yeah, it didn't look like I was going to be able to solve it. So today what we're going to do is we're going to build a little hacker Bose system, uh, hopefully with even better features than it originally came with. I think I could probably do a lot with this, but we're just going to get it to like a basic level. The thing I'm going to be using is this up to stream amp. It's uh, this board here. It has uh, Bluetooth capabilities, Wi-Fi, Spotify, a bunch of music things. And um, basically it has your speaker inputs, uh, handles 50 watts. Um, I did do some tests on this and um, it can pull 0.12 amps at 24 volts. So if you do buy one of these systems, that's the kind of power supply you need to power one of these. Um, it didn't pull much current though. So uh, let's get to it. Let's get rid of the junk that we can't use. It really cuts down on the number of parts. Uh, there's a lot of stuff we just don't need anymore. We need the, the original speakers. Oh, magnetized. Which we're gonna take the cables off of this. And uh, I guess that's where we can start. So we'll go ahead and desolder these. Okay. I think the next thing to do is to take, <laughs> I actually only have red wires. Not ideal, you usually want black and red. Um, so maybe I'll mark these somehow. But I'm going to attach them to the board kind of like this. This board has negative, positive, negative, and positive. So it can support two speakers. So uh, let's go ahead and try to solder some wires on here. So I'm going to put some flux on here. This was my test thing to make sure I could do it. Probably needs to be taken off. That's good. And the most important thing here is that they don't touch. This might be kind of difficult um, because I used bigger wires here because I thought maybe it gives better speaker sound. I'm not sure though. So I can clean this up first before I put it on. It's a little bit better. I'm just gonna first try to just kind of tack them on and we can kind of clean them up. I think some of these might be a little bit too long. So let's cut this one. Let's re tack this on. Okay. Not perfect, but. And the last one we're gonna tack on. See if we can flow these better. Oops. I'm gonna go get the multimeter and 
test these, make sure they're not connected in any way and they're all independent, but I, I think it looks okay. Not the best soldering job, but yeah, it'll work. So now I'm gonna do a continuity test and none of these should be touching each other. So that's what we're gonna be testing. Looks good. Nice. So to secure these, I'm just gonna hot glue them in. Gonna make a few marks in case it comes off. See this thing's working yet? Yep. Silicone would be better option for this, but hot glue will work. And this helps to relieve the tension so our points don't break off. The only time you have to be really careful with using hot glue is if the part actually gets hot in the area, because then it could liquefy again. And that's when you want to use uh, silicone, like a temperature resistant silicone even. So the next thing you need to do is we're going to put this where the old power supply used to be on this. I want to cover this metal um, just because in case something slides, I don't want it to short out. I'm just going to use some galvanized tape for that. And then I think I'm gonna use some pads maybe, to try to keep it level. Let's see how that fits on. Uh, I don't think we should have one here. So we can move out. So maybe back here. I think it looks okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, glue this down too. Straighten these wires out. So this is our positive and this is our negative. So this is our negative. So I think this is set to kind of start putting it back in the box. Seems kind of quick, but yeah. So this is the original box. The most important thing about speakers like this is that if you need bass, which you want, it has to be sealed very well, like airtight. Otherwise, you're not going to get the bass. So we're going to need to make sure we keep this tight. Things are sealed in place. And that's where I recommend, you know, using the vulcanized uh, tape. That should help too. But let's see if we can start wiring this a bit. on because when I flip this over it wants to fall out so I'm just gonna tack it down a little bit with some hot glue before it's screwed down so I can actually flip this over because the speakers actually I think they need to go on the outside you see some of the silicones ripped but I think it'll be okay you know right now I'm just gonna run a DC power in here uh, later it might be good to move the LED lights the infrared and extend these things and have this you know be at exactly this port instead of running a wire into it but this is just kind of like a concept to make sure this works and sounds okay
Okay, now I think we should be able to flip this over. So, let's get our first speaker. So the positive is on this side, we can see the plus indicator. So this would be this terminal. So first I try to just tack this on. Let's see if we can get a little bit more on this now. Okay, I think it's pretty good. We'll do the other terminal. This is the negative terminal. Let's do the other side. Positives on this side. So, see which one we marked as positive. It's this one. Put some more on. I think that one's all right. And our last speaker wire. The only thing I worry about here is dropping solder like on the voice coil and burning it, putting a nice hole in it, so. Okay, it's tacked on. Um, I guess now would be a good time to kind of test the functionality, make sure this thing turns on before we screw it all together. Let's see if we have speakers. Connected to your Wi-Fi network. That sounded good. So I have the app open. Okay, I'm switching to it. I'll turn up the volume. Seems okay. So I'm gonna put this back together. And um uh, Make sure it's still working and stuff. Let's see if we can slide this in. Uh, we do need to put this through somehow. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, I don't think this plug is long enough. That's a bit of an issue. I wonder if I can take off this ferrite core. Okay, I'm gonna try to take this off. Hmm. I think it's melted on. Could try to make this hole a bit bigger. Maybe I'll do that. Let's see if that's big enough now. Yes. Perfect. The Dremel comes to the rescue. Okay, so now we can set this to plug in. But let's unplug this until we're ready. Okay. Plug that in here. If 
hopefully this all fits. Oh, there you go. Took this cables in. Check this again, make sure it's still working. You can see now it has a lot more base to it uh, since it's now sealed. <clears throat> so now I have to remember how to put on the rest of these parts. I'm going to put some of these parts in just to make it more aesthetically pleasing until I have other things to put in this. Okay, so there we have our speaker system. Let's plug it in. Uh, should it still working? Okay, so it works. I think it could be put in better. If you guys have any ideas how we could go back to this, maybe make a part two, things you like to see. Uh, we could go ahead and do that. But anyhow, thanks for watching, guys. It was fun building this. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.